I started uploading to YouTube back in 2013. I actually had my original channel for a few years before that, but I didn't do too much until that point. And that was really just because of the availability of cameras that I could take underwater and were relatively uh, cost effective. So I started uploading videos and while I was doing that, from time to time, SJ would help me by holding a camera or uh, taking some footage with um, another camera and assisting in some way. But for, for the most part, my original channel was more my interests, hence the name, uh, Endurance Swimmer Australia, because I've got a swimming background. But um, I'd say it was about two years ago that we decided that we would perhaps start a new project, a new channel that was more collaborative in nature. And that's what this one's all about, Oz in Pictures. However, uh, since then, you will notice from time to time there's some older material that has been re-uploaded and rebadged, And that's, that's because basically it's a good fit for the channel. Um, but as time has gone on, I'm finding that I'm uploading more and more videos and the ones that I'm not uploading from the original channel, they're more the exception rather than the rule. So a few of those is because the quality isn't that great. Um, a lot of junk footage, so to speak, that ends up on the cutting room floor, um, using filters, different cameras, and they all stay there on the original channel. And um, while they were a learning process, no, no need to upload them again. However, there's a few projects that I kind of am pleased with. Um, but they, they also have a bit of a home on the original channel, a bit of a following there. So I'm reluctant on a different level to upload them because why create a duplicate video uh, and divide the um, maybe the following it might get. And um, one of those videos is the video that got the most attention of all, which is one on reel and guideline use. Um, if you're familiar with cave diving or wreck diving, overhead environments, you'll understand the importance of using a reel and guideline and it's a little bit of an art so having done my second cave diving course i decided that there wasn't really much or certainly at the time there wasn't many um videos that really showed what i wanted to learn when i was getting ready for my course so i set out to make my own video it took me about two weeks i did it in my front living room i did it in the local park so i got some very interesting looks as i would uh, lay the line all over the place, round the uh, picnic table and so on and so forth. And then I went to a local jetty and I actually did some of the skills underwater as well. And that got the attention of quite a few people. Um, some people in the local diving community, they gave me some advice and uh, I actually took it down briefly, uh, integrated some of the advice that they gave me and I uploaded it again. And then it got the attention of some people interstate um, some of which um, have been involved in diving education for a long time. And one uh, contacted me and said, well, would you be interested in perhaps um, us using the video um, for training? Because he was consulting with a, a new diving company at the time. And I said, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm up for that. And I was thinking actually of making more videos like that, more training videos, because uh, for me, it meant that my diving skills would get better. And um, so I did that, uh, and that led also to, um, as I say, meeting new people, diving with new people, new friendships, and it was actually one of the, the, the best parts of that whole project. He was a terribly, he's a terribly nice gentleman, and um, got to do some great dives up in Mount Gambier with him. Uh, I haven't done any further training videos since then. I, I, I need to get back out there and do some more. Uh, maybe this, this will. Uh, encourage me to do that but I have decided to re-upload this video again for Oz in Pictures because I want all the work that I'm pleased with um, that a lot of work went into to be on both channels so this is just a little bit of an introduction to this video um, it's it's not a viral video by any stretch of the imagination but as far as uh, diving skills go I get a lot of nice comments which is appreciated and um, yeah so I thought I'd upload it to this channel as well I hope you enjoy it
In this video I'll be demonstrating some basic reel drills that are often used by cave and wreck divers. I'll be using a 120 meter reel which is ideal as a primary reel for technical diving. The video is split into three sections. First I'll go through a series of indoor tie-offs which can be practiced pretty much anywhere. Then I'll demonstrate the laying of line in an outdoor setting with a little bit more space simulating more accurately one does during a dive before finally demonstrating the same skills in an open water environment. The first wrap you probably ever learnt isn't really considered a wrap at all in the cave diving community. You just take it round the object without locking it off and continue, but it will probably slip so I've only included it as a comparison here to the other wraps. An improvement is a locking pull around wrap where you pass it under or over the object around but then lock it off by passing it under or over the line. Tighten it and off you go. These should keep the line taut. If the object you're trying to place the line on is small enough you can actually do the locking pull around wrap with one hand. Just take the line, turn it on itself and put it on the object and continue. For a more secure version of the strap you simply do it twice. Take a turn of line as before, place it on the object, but immediately follow it up with another turn of line, place it on top which locks it off nicely. This is also a very secure secondary tie off. One of the most common tie offs that are used in cave and wreck diving is the locking double pull around wrap. Take it twice around the object, back over the line or underneath, pull it tight and continue onwards and that should keep the line taut. The over under wrap is exactly the same wrap but applied a different way. You go twice around the object and then go back to the line coming into the tie off and put it back over the top. There are times when you might need to actually tie off the line itself because the object's too small. Extend a bite in the line, secure the reel by turning the nut, transfer to the little finger. Extend a bite in the line, pass over or under the object, back around tight and back through the hole. Tighten once and do a half hitch to secure it. Release the nut and off you go. If you want to do a tie off you can get off easily. There is a quick release version but I'm not a real fan of it. Extend a bite in the line. Lock the reel, pass the reel to the other hand, extend the bite, pass it over or under the object, back around and create another bite and it's the bite that you take through the hole this time. Pull it tight, keeping some tension on it. You have to put some tension on the line to the reel, then release the nut under tension and off you go. And just to demonstrate, this is how easily this particular tie-off comes off. One of the important rules in cave diving is to run a continuous, unbroken line to the surface. This is easily done by doing a primary tie-off either out of the water or immediately in the water. Putting a loop in the end of the line is the easiest way and threading the reel through this loop. If you wish greater security and to loop it round the object a few more times, that's okay too. Then deploy the line on your descent towards your secondary tie off. As you're going, make sure to put a little bit of pressure on the reel itself. This prevents the light from getting slack and keeps it taut the whole time. When you've got into the entrance of the cave, either just inside or outside, you can do your secondary tie off and it can be any tie off but basically it can't come undone so in this case I'm doing a triple locking pull around wrap. If you want to test how good your secondary tie offs are, disconnect the line between the primary and the secondary tie off, pull on the line beyond the secondary tie off and you shouldn't get any slippage whatsoever. If that is the case then the tie off you have selected for your secondary tie off is an appropriate tie off. Now come with me as we lay some line to simulate a dive.
For the next part of the video, we're going to go to the open water environment and practice the skills there. Now this is with caves and wrecks in mind, but for this demonstration we'll do it in the ocean. I'm going to use my side mount harness, which is a Gollum Gear Armadillo, and I'm going to be using the same reel. The reel's best attached to the back of the crutch strap, but mine's a little bit low. So for this demonstration I'm going to have it on one of the back D-rings.